Today you guys are going to do a lab uh, over acceleration. So we've done position, we've done velocity, now we're going to do acceleration. Okay, and so this is just a quick tutorial of how to use some of the tools I've provided you with to get this data. First, uh, I've plugged in the motion detector into the digital one port of the LabQuest. And this is the screen it automatically pops up with, right? I'm looking at the position and all these screens. So this is the meter screen. You can always click the home button to get back to this screen. Uh, anyways, meter screen right here I want to change the duration so I click over at duration and I want the duration to be uh, for this lab we only need three seconds done Okay, um, and then over here I'm going to change while I'm on this page I'm going to change the rate from 20 samples per second to 40 samples per second okay, um, okay. and there's one more thing we want to change before we're ready to collect data and that's under file settings and it's this the number of points for derivative calculations we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna change that to 15 uh, that has to do with how the LabQuest smooths data and makes it nice and readable okay so we've set that up you're ready to collect data and so we're ready to collect data I've got my lab set up uh, over here is the motion detector um, it's plugged into the LabQuest the cart is on the track. I've made sure the track is level. These feet down here let me level the track. Okay. And I've got this little cardboard reflector on here with a rubber band just to uh, make sure that the sound waves reflect off the cart. I've got one bar mass here and I've got a hanging mass over here. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to push the play button, or collect. It starts clicking, I let go, and I catch it right before it hits the end. Okay. From here I've got some data. And now let's take a look at analyzing that data. So now that we have this data collected, there's actually some really cool things we can do with it um, in order to analyze it. And we can use the iPads to do that. Okay? And so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to click the home button on the LabQuest. Okay? And that takes me to this home screen and I'm going to go connections. Okay? And what I want to do is I want to turn on data share with graphical analysis. Okay? I already have it on. Um, if it wasn't on, you just click this radio button. Now this is important right here. This tells me what LabQuest I'm going to be connecting to. Uh, so mine's HS1208. Okay, close that when I'm done. And now what I want to do is I want to go ahead and uh, pull up this information on iPad. Now that we've collected the data using the LabQuest, we want to use the iPad to help us analyze it. So we need the graphical analysis app that you guys got a couple days ago. So I find that on my iPad and I launch it. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to push this minus button up here. This thing lets me zoom my graph, but I don't have any graphs to zoom yet. So now I'm going to click this plus button. And the plus button allows me to pick where I want to get data from. I can get it from the accelerometers in the iPad itself. That's how it knows which way it's facing. I can add data manually or it automatically pops up with any lab quests it can see on the network. That's why we paid attention. I wanted 1208, so I picked that one, and it imports a couple of the graphs for me. But we're interested in more than just these two graphs. We're interested in three. So if I touch this graph button up in the top left, it says, oh, we can look at three graphs. Of course, that doesn't mean I automatically know which one I want. So I'm going to come over here to these column buttons, I'm going to push that. And I'm going to say, I want the acceleration. It's the only one I don't have displayed. And now I can see all three graphs on one screen, which is kind of handy for the duration of this lab. Now, throughout this lab, it's going to ask you to find slopes and time intervals and initial positions and final positions. So I'm going to show you that right here on this velocity time graph. If you take your finger and you swipe across uh, the screen, okay, so we swipe across. Well, it used to work. There we go. Swipe across the screen. You're going to get this time interval with these two little flags that tell you the beginning time and the ending time. So I'm going to pick that interval. That's where it looks like it's moving away, speeding up. And so I can see right here it tells me my initial time. Right here it tells me my final time. Now if I touch inside that interval, it gives me some options. I can describe what's going on in there. So I could say speed up, move away. If I could spell speed speed up okay uh, I can turn on statistics or I can turn off statistics okay so if I'm looking for the mean statistics is a good thing I can um, add a fit to this so let me hide my keyboard that looked linear so I added a linear fit I add that 
Okay, and so now I get a slope over here. Um, I get a y-intercept. I get how close it is to linear, and it's fairly close to linear. Okay, well, what if I want to know the initial and final times? Well, then I just touch somewhere outside the interval, say over here, and then I can take and drag that flag around, and it'll tell me at this time I was at 0 0.012 meters per second. And drag that up to the other end, and I can see where I was at that time. 0.614 meters per second. So it's pretty intuitive. Just use your fingers to click and drag over the interface and get the different information you need.